it's time you find a fragrance that you like and not just what TikTok told you to buy, okay? Time to be a smart shopper, someone who knows what they want. Welcome back to season two of Fine Beauty Bible. Today's topic is a very important aspect to learn about in order to enhance and expand your participation in beauty, and that is fragrance. We're gonna go over a bit of terminology and a few tips for how to shop for fragrance until you land on the one that is perfect for you, something you can consider to be your signature fragrance. First things first, what is the difference between eau de toilette, eau de parfum, a body mist, what does it all mean? The difference between all of these is the concentration of the fragrance. That is how fragrances are categorized and sold. How concentrated a fragrance is depends on how much alcohol versus how much fragrance is in that bottle. That concentration affects how intense the smell is and it also affects how quickly it evaporates from your skin, so how long lasting it will be. The more alcohol that's in a product, the less of the fragrance you'll get. And the less alcohol is in a product, the more of a strong scent you'll get from wearing that fragrance. The first type is Eau Fresh. As you can see, most fragrance terminology is in French because that is like the motherland of fragrance and perfume. Eau Fresh is also known as body mist. These are usually 97% alcohol with between 1 and 3% of actual fragrance in it. These are not very long lasting at all. You can usually get anywhere between 45 minutes and two hours of wear out of an Eau Fresh. So that is the reason most of the time you can find body mist available for less than $10 most of the time. Then we have Eau de Cologne. Those have usually between two and 4% fragrance and they can give you about two hours of wear, upwards of four hours. Then we have one of the most popular ones, which is Eau de Toilette. These have between 5 and 10% of perfume oil in that bottle, and because of that, they give you about 2-4 to four hours of wear. These are usually lighter and they don't last as long on the skin, so they're great for daytime use, but they will need to be reapplied throughout the day. They are not all day long lasting. Another one of the most popular categories of fragrance is Eau de Parfum, which is the one you'll see the majority of the time within lots of expensive fragrance brands. These have between 10 and 20% fragrance oil in them. They're gonna be a lot more fuller bodied, more bold. You're gonna be able to smell them a lot easier and you're gonna be able to smell them for a lot longer. You'll usually get between five and seven hours of wear out of an Eau de Parfum. So they're great for all day use. They do not need to be applied nearly as much as an Eau de Toilette or a body mist. And because they have much less alcohol in their formulation, on the shelf, they will actually last in your collection for up to five years longer than other fragrance types. Because of its shelf life and how full bodied they are and how long lasting they are, these tend to be more expensive, but they're worth the investment if you have a fragrance that you really love and you wanna be able to keep it for a long amount of time. And then some brands will also go as far as selling fragrance oil itself. These have between 20 and 60% fragrance oil, and these are going to be the most long lasting on the skin. Well, you will usually get about eight hours of wear from a fragrance oil. So what some people like to do is wear a fragrance oil for that long lasting base fragrance, and then apply one of their lighter fragrances on top just to complement them. Another thing to note is that certain brands will only participate in manufacturing certain types of fragrance. So you're not really gonna find an Urban Outfitters fragrance oil, and you're not gonna really find a Tom Ford body mist. Certain brands, depending on their price point and what type of fragrance they wanna align themselves with, you'll find them producing more of one type of fragrance more than others. Another thing some brands will do is produce the same fragrance in Eau de Toilette Eau de Parfum and or a fragrance oil. So they will offer all three options or they might also create a cologne version and they'll change up the notes slightly between them. So no, Tom Ford Black Orchid, they did not just release a special edition bottle that is purple or a special edition bottle that is gold. If you read the fine print between all three of those, they actually are different types of fragrances. One of them is Eau de Toilette, one is Eau de Parfum, another one has slightly different notes, but they keep the same name just for the sake of familiarity. And if you're ever in the store and you're wondering why a certain fragrance is priced so well or why the price might look too good to be true, for example, if you're in Urban Out 
Outfitters in their beauty section and you see an Eau de Parfum or an Eau de Toilette and it's only $8, which is body mist prices, you can pretty much bet that the amount of fragrance oil in that fragrance is on the lower end of the spectrum. So now here's the fun part. How do you know what fragrances you like, what fragrances you don't like? You want to choose which store you go to carefully because certain locations to buy fragrance will be far more helpful than others. For example, at a department store, most people in a department store are actually there working for the brand of the section that you're in, not working for the department store as a whole. So they're not trained to sell you all different types of fragrances. More than likely that person standing there, they know those fragrances inside and out, but they're not gonna know how they compare to your favorite fragrance from another brand. You wanna go somewhere like Sephora, for example, even Ulta, where the people there are trained on all different brands of fragrance and can give you different suggestions based on what you tell them you like that isn't all just in within one brand. The first step I would recommend is finding three fragrance brands that have a large array of options. That way you can sort of stick to that one line, figure out what you like and don't like from that one line, and that will help you to start branching out into other brands and what to look for in those fragrances. So two of my favorites to start off with for beginners would be Tom Ford fragrances and Margiela. And I don't mean purchasing these right away. I mean look for these in the store so that you can smell them. So when you walk up to a Tom Ford counter or Sephora carries these Margiela fragrances, I want you to literally smell every single one. And as you're smelling every single one, take notes on your phone of which ones in that line you liked or didn't like. Another brand that's great to do this with is Jo Malone. All three of these brands have a wide array of fragrances within their one fragrance line that will help you figure out what you like, what you don't like, what fragrances smell more like certain occasions, what, what is the vibe that certain scents are giving you as you're smelling them. Brands that I don't recommend starting out with if you're just trying to figure out what you like in a fragrance would be ones like the brand that creates Baccarat Rouge 540 or even a super unique fragrance like Fenty Parfum. These and brands like this are so unique that you don't really want to start off with these because what what is going to happen is you love these so much that you try to look for these similar notes in other brands and there's not too many similarities between these fragrances fenty parfum even this has so many different notes in it it's layered so intricately and uniquely that it's a little bit of a confusing fragrance so smelling this as one of your first fragrances and being like yeah i like that it's not going to be a good starting point for you so like I said, you want to start off with those brands that have a wide variety and that is how you're going to be able to move on to the next step. So in addition to going in the store and just sniffing around, you don't want to only pay attention to what you like. Because to be honest, we tend to have much stronger feelings about things that we hate than things that we like. You might not know what fragrance exactly you want to wear every single day, but you will surely and much easily know which fragrances you do not want anywhere near you. And you're gonna make a nice long list of those. For example, I hate most of the Chanel fragrances, especially Chanel number no. five, because I think it smells a little bit outdated. It's too floral for my liking. When I put it on, it didn't feel like myself. I wasn't blown away when I smelled it. And for all of these different reasons, I'm not interested at all in Chanel number no. five. I absolutely hate it. Or, for example, if you want to start off with a very popular TikTok suggestion, like TikTok might tell you that right now, Marc Jacobs Perfect Fragrance is all the rave. When I went in the store to smell that, I didn't like it because it felt too bright, a little bit too juvenile, and I thought that it was too fruity for what I usually wear. So because of that, I'm not interested in that fragrance, even though it is super, super popular on TikTok. But just knowing that I don't like that fragrance helps me get a little bit closer to knowing what I do like. So that's your first piece of homework. Go in the store, sniff literally six to 10 random fragrances, list on your phone. Which three did you love? Which five were you sort of okay with? Which two did you absolutely hate when you sprayed it on your body? Once you have that part done, most of the rest of your homework here is online. So you're gonna go back home, you're not at the mall anymore, and you're just gonna go on maybe the Sephora app, for example. You shop online, use all of those 
filters that are available for you. Play around with the different search results and see what you come up with so that by the time you get into the store, you can actually get much more valuable help because you've already come in partially knowing what you want. The next thing to be mindful of are notes in a fragrance and what that even means. So you will have three different types of notes in any fragrance. You're gonna have your base notes, your heart notes, and your top notes. The difference between them is how bold the scent is and how long lasting that note will be. Also, certain types of notes are more likely to be a base note versus being a top note. Your top notes are your first impression of a fragrance. It's what you smell right away when you spray it on yourself or spray it on one of the tester strips. They usually are the least intense, and because of that, top notes usually evaporate from your skin and you can't smell them anymore after about 5 to 15 minutes. So they're not the most important notes in a fragrance, but they can be nice while they last. Then you have your heart notes. These are the fragrance notes that are sort of in between that base layer and that first impression. These are like the conversation of your fragrance. Your heart notes usually last between 30 minutes and an hour. So again, not super long lasting. Then we have our base notes, and these are the absolute foundation of your fragrance. They are going to be what you smell the most and what you smell the longest. These will not evaporate from your skin until sometimes after five hours. So when you're looking at a certain fragrance, even if you hate the way it initially smells, more than likely those are the top notes that you hate. The base notes are the reason it's important to try a fragrance for several hours before you make your decision because you want to make sure you like how those notes smell. Liking the top notes of a fragrance is very insignificant because that's not what you're going to be smelling the majority of the time. So if you have a fragrance that you hate when you first spray it on your skin, have some patience because you never know, you might love the way it dries down. Or it could be vice versa, you love the way a certain fragrance smells when you first put it on, but two hours later you're like, mm, this fragrance does not suit me, I don't think I like it. You'll start to see vocabulary that describes the fragrance family as well as the scent type. So fragrance family will include words that describe the overall scent or mood of the fragrance. So these will be words like warm, spicy, fresh, floral, citrus, earthy, fruity, sweet. All these words will be used to describe what type of scent it is. And what you're gonna start off with are the fragrances that you hated when you smelled them in the store. So I'm gonna type in Chanel number no. five. And I see here on the website, the fragrance family that this is in is floral. It's telling me that the scent type is a powdery floral. That powderiness sort of explains why it felt old lady-ish to me, because fragrances that are powdery used to be much more popular than they are now. It's telling me that the key notes are aldehydes, jasmine, neroli, and sandalwood. I can now make a little list in my head of fragrance notes that I might not be a fan of. So I'm gonna, on that list, I'm gonna put jasmine, neroli, sandalwood, and aldehydes. Now you're gonna go to a fragrance that you absolutely love. I'm gonna say Margella by the Fireplace. And I see here that this fragrance family is warm and spicy, and they describe the scent type as warm and sweet gourmands. So from that, I can sort of get make a mental note in my head and say, you know what, I think I like warm fragrances better than powdery fragrances. I think I like sweet fragrances and spicy fragrances a lot better than floral fragrances. Keep on making that list, keep on building that list of what you like, what you don't like, and what falls right in the middle, meaning that you might like it, might not, depending on the rest of the scent. So yes, direct fragrance recommendations from other people are great because they can help to broaden your horizons and learn about fragrances you might not have even heard the name of before. That's great, but in order to become a better shopper and know what you yourself like and form your own opinions, it's important to have this background knowledge. You might also want to be mindful of fragrances that are available in different variations. For example, so there is a fragrance called Dior Poison, and I'm not a huge fan of it, but Hypnotic Poison is one of my favorites. It goes along with the fragrance notes that I love, so I prefer this one over the original Dior Poison. And then we have Carolina Herrera, a super popular fragrance, but this one that I prefer is actually called Good Girl Supreme. So the bottle looks a little bit different. The original Good Girl has that classic navy blue bottle. This one is actually gray with sparkles. And the notes in these variations 
are usually slightly different than the original versions of them. And in these slight variations, you might find a fragrance that you like even more than the original version of it. So I would say after you smell a fragrance that you're not too fond of, see if there's other options available for that same fragrance but slightly different because you might end up liking that one way more. But yes, I hope that those fragrance shopping tips were helpful. But because this season is all about Valentine's Day and getting ready for next weekend, I wanted to include a few options in case you don't have time to go and figure out what you like and don't like. These are four fragrances you can smell in the store this week, see if you like them, and nine times out of ten, you're gonna love one of these. First one is Carolina Herrera Good Girl. You're more than likely gonna love it. The next one is Black Opium um, by YSL. And if YSL does nothing else, they're gonna make a fragrance, okay? So YSL Libre, YSL Black Opium, people love them both. But my favorite from them is Black Opium. And both of these have similar vibes to me. They're gonna be nighttime fragrances, very bold, very grown, very um, enticing. And I think that they are very suitable for Valentine's Day. And then two other options are going to be Killian Princess. If you go into Sephora, you can smell all five of them. They even have some other ones, one of them being the one that Rihanna wears, which is called Killian Love Don't Be Shy. And then, of course, the last one is the one that everybody has, and that is um, Baccarat Rouge 540. Um, but in case you don't want to spend the full $350 for the full price, you can get either the fragrance oil, and that one is only $95, and it smells the exact same, and because of what you learned in this video, you know that fragrance oils actually last longer on the skin, um, and that one is great. It has lots of amber scents, and I find that it's great for day and night, right on through. Those are four fragrances that you would love in case you don't have time to follow the steps in this video and, and search for the one that you actually love. I hope you guys enjoyed this fragrance shopping video and I hope that all of these tips were helpful. Let me know what your favorite fragrance is, if you've ever followed this process before. Make sure you continue watching the rest of this season because we are going through so many nice little tutorials for just getting glammed up and feeling like your best self. And I will see you guys next week for an episode of Brit Recent Beauty and again next month of course for a whole new season of Fine Beauty Bible. Bye!